السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أهلا بكم إلى هذه الحلقة من برنامج من الداخل عبر قناة الميادين معكم زينب الصفار لعل الإدارات الأمريكية المتعاقبة ومنذ مئات السنين تشن حربا ضد شعوب العالم من خلال الانقلابات والغزوات والحرب الاقتصادية والعقوبات وكما أن الحكومة الأمريكية بالديمقراطيين والجمهوريين ووسائل إعلام الشركات وحلفائهم الدوليين يكثفون الحملة للتدخل في الجمهورية البوليفارية الفنزويلية اقتصاديا وسياسيا وحتى عسكريا بحسب المتابعين يسعى مركز العمل الدولي الذي أسسه في عام 1992 النائب العام السابق للولايات المتحدة رامسي كلارك يسعى بجهد حثيث إلى توحيد جميع الذين يشعرون بالغضب من المحاولات التي لا تكل من قبل وول ستريت والبنتاجون لتقويد حق تقرير المصير للشعب الفنزويلي وحكومته المنتخبة ديمقراطيا بقيادة نيكولاس مادورو حيث يبادر الناشطون اليوم إلى التخطيط للتحرك عبر أنشطة وحركات احتجاجية في الثالث والعشرين من فبراير شباط الجاري وكذلك في الأيام التي تسبق مباشرة هذا التاريخ وبعده لكن لماذا هذا اليوم بالذات يخصص للتعاون مع مختلف قطاعات حركات الشعوب في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وحول العالم لاتخاذ إجراءات فورية لوقف الحملة نحو الحرب للإضاءة أكثر على هذا النشاط والتحرك يطيب لنا أن نستقبل عبر خدمة سكايب من ولاية نيوجيرسي الأمريكية الكاتبة والناشطة السياسية الأمريكية سارة فلاندرز القيادية في مركز العمل الدولي. So Sarah Flanders, welcome to من الداخل from the inside, ma'am. It's good to be here talking. It's our pure pleasure, ma'am, to have you. Well, uh, allow me to ask you, Sarah, why do you think that now is a critical time to redouble your efforts to mobilize the broadest possible solidarity in the streets on February 23rd? So, as we can see here, an internationally coordinated day of actions has been set for this specific date. Why this specific date and what plans have you organized for this global day opposing U.S. war on Venezuela? Well, this date, February 23rd, will be the one-month anniversary of the latest attempt uh, through a coup d'etat to overturn the government of Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, an elected government where, once again, the U.S. has appointed their own collaborators to take the place of President Maduro. And uh, U.S. government is doing this in coordination with uh, the European imperialist powers, with the NATO forces, and they are doing it in coordination with the most extensive uh, economic sanctions, which are an effort to completely strangle the economy, to cut off all trade, to cut off even all shipping, and uh, in, including Venezuela's very substantial uh, oil, uh, shipments of oil. Mm -hmm. So this is an all-out effort to bring down the government of Venezuela. There have been 56 coup d'etats, uh, U.S.-supported coups, just in Latin America, one after the other. This is the whole history of uh, U.S. in the region. And there is a great determination in Venezuela to resist the latest efforts to pull the government down. There have been massive mobilizations, and we want to organize global support and solidarity with Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So we chose this date, February 23rd, that weekend, as a day for uh, continuing solidarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah, you say uh, no sanctions, no coup, no war. Solidarity with the Venezuelan people and the Bolivarian Revolution. Allow me also to read some slogans and chants that are prepared for February 23rd uh, actions. U.S. makes endless war, Venezuela feeds the poor. Not U.S. land, not U.S. soil, hands of Venezuelan soil. Capitalist media lies while Venezuelans die. Up with Maduro, down with Trump. You gave us oil for our homes, Venezuela, you're not alone. The people united will never be defeated. 
Venezuela wants peace, stop the terror in the streets. Venezuela has free tuition, U.S. funds the opposition. Food and medicine for the poor, Hugo Chavez opened the door. No, no to a right-wing coup, Venezuela, we're with you. U.S. CIA hands off Venezuela. Sarah, what are your uh, demands through your would-be actions? Well, really, our effort is to build in, in an activist way in the streets mobilizations globally in support of Venezuela. And therefore, we have provided uh, suggested chants for demonstrations, downloadable flyers and posters. Uh, this has been translated into 14 languages by volunteers in different countries. Uh, so there is an effort to, um, for the people of the world to speak together and to speak against another U.S. war. We all know the horrendous toll of U.S. war in Syria, in Iraq, mm -hmm. the threats on Iran. And also the, uh, against US Yemen support. by proxy. Absolutely, absolutely. And war by proxy with endless aid to Israel, to Zionism. Uh, this is this is the cost of U.S. wars, and we have seen again and again the U.S. declare the government of a country uh, illegal or simply declare it a dictatorship and insist that they will provide a new government. Uh, when there is resistance, they organize mercenaries and they organize um, attempted invasions, and this is exactly the same script that is now unfolding in Venezuela. So we are trying to galvanize forces who stood against U.S. wars in the Middle East, in the Arab world, and to very much focus on what is happening now throughout Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, there is talk, the U.S. is organizing what they call a humanitarian corridor. Uh, this is really an invasion from Colombia, where they have vast warehouses, storehouses, and military equipment. And um, they're saying that this will be an effort to deliver humanitarian aid. Of course, it's not that. It is an effort to launch an invasion of Venezuela through Colombia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Allow me to ask you, you said that it's going to be a global day, a global day in the U.S. of A and Latin America or also across uh, uh, the uh, world? I mean, do you have something also arranged, organized, coordinated in our part of the world? We don't yet, and I so hope that we can hear of events because we would very much like to list uh, events uh, very much in in Lebanon, in Syria, if it's possible. Uh, mm. But we have heard of uh, an event uh, that will be in Tehran. Uh, this is the 20th anniversary of the Venezuelan Bolivarian Revolution and the 40th anniversary of the Iranian Revolution. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are forces there that on the 40th anniversary events carried signs in solidarity with Venezuela. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one uh, event that I know of at this time, but we would very much welcome hearing of others. We mm -hmm. know of events in Bangladesh and in India. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very important. So, a, a number of events in Europe and, of course, in Canada, along with the U.S. So you can call now through our show, through Al Mayadeen TV, because it's a pan-Arab TV channel, to also the peoples of the Arab world, of the Arab capitals, of the Muslim capitals to also go on and coordinate, for example, actions on the same particular day, which is February 23rd. Wow, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This, this, this is the way solidarity is built. It right. is built by people connecting with each other and reaching out, knowing this is an important time to speak. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm, is... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and our voice together as a global force is the big power. 
as much as the U.S. wants to project military power, Absolutely. it is people power that Absolutely. determines history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a decider. Yes. This is, and I think we need to build confidence in that in the face of a new war, that it is the people who can decide and can push U.S. aggression back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, it seems, uh, Sarah, your action seems to be ongoing. Also, scores of peace and social justice organizations are planning a week of protest activities around the theme of, quote, no to war, no to NATO, no to racism, including, of course, a mass march and rally on March 30th. What about this action and what next? Uh, well, that's a very important uh, anniversary. This is the 70th year of the NATO Military Alliance, a U.S. commanded aggressive military alliance. Uh, they are holding a summit meeting in Washington, D.C. on the very anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. What an outrage and an offense that is. And so Forces have come together to call for a demonstration uh, just the weekend, just before this meeting is held, and that will be in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. uh, on March 30th. And, and that site is no2nato2019.org. There's a lot of material there, and uh, we think that this will be a way uh, to both continue the activity and to bring national pressure uh, and also to um, here's NATO meeting and celebrating themselves mm -hmm. and shouldn't there be a response from the people saying no this is a, an aggressive uh, uh, Yes. We have no support for NATO. Right. Allow us, Sarah, to stop now for a short break, and then we will continue further to talk about the common denominators between what's going on in Venezuela today and what has uh, been going on against uh, Syria, but after the break. إذن فاصل قصير ونعود. لا تذهب بعيدا. يرى الدكتور بول غريك روبرتس مساعد وزير الخزانة السابق للسياسة الاقتصادية أن واشنطن مصممة على تلقين دول أمريكا اللاتينية بالكامل درسا أنه من غير المجدي أن تحلم تلك الدول بتقرير مصيرها القيادية في مركز العمل الدولي سارة فلاوندرز هل برأيها يتكرر السيناريو السوري اليوم في فنزويلا؟ This is a scenario that is once again repeated, and we have seen this time and again, where without cause, uh, and they have no business interfering in any country, uh, but suddenly the U.S. will simply declare a country uh, that, that their government is rigged, is corrupt, must be replaced. Uh, and it can be a country as poor as Haiti or as rich as Venezuela. Uh, or as rich as Syria or Iraq. Uh, it ma seems to matter little who is targeted, except that there is a form of popular people's power, that there is an effort to use the resources of the country for the development uh, for the whole people. That very concept is threatening to U.S. corporate power, and therefore one country after another is targeted Sure. Allow me to ask you here something, uh, sir. Venezuela has the largest crude oil reserves of any country, as well as large reserves of gold and natural gas and other mineral wealth. As an observer, who is and um, who's responsible and what are, in your opinion, the causes of the current economic crisis in Venezuela and uh, the calls, the reason, I mean, for the calls for action against Maduro? Well, one of the things that we uh, put out on the No War in Venezuela statement is an explanation that the cause 
of the hardships and the, the wild inflation, the economic instability in Venezuela is absolutely the U.S. role of sanctions, of currency manipulation and economic destabilization. This is not something that is rooted in the Venezuelan economy, but it is rooted in their past uh, colonial position to the U.S. In other words, they they do not have an independent economy. So the U.S. is able to put great pressure on them. Uh, and this is a big problem. And yet in the U.S. media, in the corporate media here in the U.S., you won't see hardly a mention of this. They will mm -hmm. simply say that uh, the Venezuelan economy is in a free fall, is an absolute collapse, and it's because the government is corrupt and is stealing everything. And they, they don't in any way address their own role in creating these shortages and, uh, and wild inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, and they make no mention of what Venezuela is able to do to at least assure that, uh, people are still able to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh, a lot will be seen in the days ahead as to uh, right now there are massive rallies, millions of people going on in Venezuela in support of the government. Mm -hmm. And also the, the upper classes, the wealthy, are organizing their own rallies in the more privileged parts of Caracas and other uh, cities. Right. And at the same time, you have this struggle going on within the government, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. there's a, a lot that's happening uh, yes. in lot, the days ahead. Yes, I'll, I will come back to talk about how the U.S. has been exploiting the... Uh, uh, whatever Venezuela has and all the uh, interests of Venezuela. But allow me to ask you here something about the open letter of Maduro, of President Maduro, to the uh, U.S. Uh, people. And uh, he closed the address with, quote, we appeal to the good soul of U.S. society, a victim of its own leaders, to join our call for peace. Let us be all one people against warmongering and war. Long live the peoples of America. What were the repercussions of his address on the U.S. people? Well, beyond our Has it been covered the by the mainstream media? No, I mean. absolutely no mention is made whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And what is even hidden from people in the U.S. is that Venezuela has provided free heating oil mm -hmm. to the poorest communities in the U.S. And I'm talking about the poorest Indian reservations where people freeze to death in the winter, in the Dakotas, in North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, and in the Bronx, right here in New York City. It was Venezuela providing free heating oil for years that uh, allowed people to heat their homes. So real solidarity has been built by Venezuela in the past. It's known among so many communities, but it is never mentioned, and certainly Maduro's appeal for peace, an effort to speak to people in the U.S., has received no coverage whatsoever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unfortunately. But that, that doesn't mean that we're silenced, because uh, it's possible now to get this out widely, and uh, that's part of, of our effort to really uh, be an alternative, not only in the streets, but mm -hmm. in information to, to spread messages like this. Right. Uh, now, uh, Sarah, we all know, yes, the U.S. has exploited Latin America and the Caribbean for 200 plus years. But allow me to take you to something. You talked about how the Europeans have also been accomplices with the U.S. in what is going on against uh, President Maduro and against uh, Venezuela. Now, Italy is one of the few EU states that has refused to go along with the U.S.-led brazen campaign for regime change in Venezuela. The Italian government reportedly blocked the EU from issuing a joint policy statement calling for the recognition of Guaido as president in place of Maduro. How did you read this unique uh, Italian stance and to what extent are Russia, China, Italy and other nations essentially holding the line between a facade of order and unfettered chaos? Uh, it was a very important statement and an act by Italy to do that. And it does show that uh, mass pressure can have an impact in Italy, where there's a popular government in Venezuela and people recognize it. Uh, we should 
address every other European power that literally on the second day, as soon as, uh, I mean, imagine a man simply stepping forth and saying, I declare myself president. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. immediately saying, we recognize you, we recognize your government. Uh, someone who has stood for no election uh, as president. Uh, it, it's outrageous. And right away, the day after the U.S. did, along came almost all of the other EU, NATO members uh, in support. But what stopped it from going forward in the United Nations and the Security Council were the actions of Russia and China. And what stopped it uh, in the EU were the actions of, of Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, Turkey has also not gone along with this. So there are countries who are um, attempting to resist what's an absolutely fraudulent, outrageous mm -hmm. takeover. Because in many ways, they recognize it's even a threat to themselves. If, if the U.S. can get away with doing this in Venezuela, um, what's to stop the next effort? Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen this in exactly. country after country. They, they can recognize, they can sign an international treaty uh, with Iran to end the sanctions and then months later simply declare it null and void, even though they signed with other countries. Mm -hmm. So the, the U.S. refusal to accept international law and to become lawless uh, and demand that other countries join in that lawlessness has to be challenged. And whenever it is, I think we all take heart. Right. Uh, Sarah Flounders, American political writer and principal leader of the International Action Center from New Jersey in the U.S. Many thanks indeed for joining us, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank you for your efforts. And we do hope to hear of solidarity actions within the within the region where there's been so many U.S. wars uh, that would make a huge impact and it would be felt here and it would be felt in Venezuela. Hopefully, so hopefully, you. hopefully, inshallah. Wa shukru lakum mushahideen al-kiram ala tayyib al-mutaba'a min kul fariq amal barnamaj min kul al-mayadeen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.